Big, big thanks to Daniel and Shauna for having me this year. This has been a really, really inspirational couple of days. Uh, thank, thank everyone for their participation and their additions to everything. You know, one of the most important aspects of the talks I've been giving for the last five years is always founded on this, this theme of remember the why. And why, why t tends to make solving problems easier and simpler. And so my talk is on the origin of the surgical metaverse. And obviously that's uh, a buzz kind of name, but we've been thinking of it that way for several years because some major things happened in the tech world that finally gave us opportunities to solve simple problems in an area that most people don't really fully grasp has tons of room for improvement. You know, so it's, that's the open question. Is there room for surgical improvement <laughs> with a very simple solution. And uh, our contention is there is, and I'll try to give you some highlights of how we see that. You know, w w when I began this career, it's 34 years, uh, I really came into it with a specific passion um, where I love to push, I love to innovate. I'm obsessed with better, and it's not, it's not about other surgeons or competition, I just am intuitively just focused on improving the outcome because the why in this case is the people that we're responsible for. And when you stare someone in the eye and you know that they, they're crippled, they can't walk, they've lost their leg function, they, they literally can't uh, sustain balance, they're losing control of their arms, the, the, in, the intensity of the intimacy, if you allow it to be intimate, put such an opportunity to just push. And neurosurgery was special that way. And uh, so I had the right environment and everything else. You know, with the concept that surgery is better, you know, exponential outcomes in surgery obviously show value. So, you know, the other remember the why is process. I'm a huge believer that how you learn to grow and how you learn to learn lifelong is, is hugely important to maximizing and optimizing your performance in any high level pr profession that you're in. And in this case, uh, surgery has that opportunity as well. Um, with that being said, you know, my background, I'm an accidental surgeon. I, I did not at all grow up wanting to be a surgeon. Um, my grandfather was a, a test pilot and uh, aviator, military aviator, very storied. Um, I grew up scuba diving, certification at 11. Uh, I, I had all the right friends. I had all the right opportunities. I was absolutely an explorer archetype. And I, I knew based on what my grandfather had done, I wanted to go to space. And that ultimately was the next chapter. Well, one problem. The, the world pivoted, timing. You know, the space journey basically had given me a, a, a a process and a plan. I came up with this childlike strategy that I was going to do biomedical engineering. I was going to go to medical school. I was going to do research in medical neuroscience and stem cell transplantation of spinal cord injuries, which is how I became acquainted with the neurosurgery department. Ultimately, I honed in some of my earlier skills with some military time. All of these things just built my core value system. And, and then this dream of being the astronaut. In, in those days, the shuttle was an opportunity to, uh, you know, use a medical background with all of the other physical backgrounds to allow you to matriculate and find yourself uh, on that journey. And that, that was the plan. Whether it was going to work, obviously it didn't. But um, because of that, uh, you know, I, the, the course changed. Uh, my, my chairman of neurosurgery had asked me, look, Robert, uh, we'd love to have you apply for training in neurosurgery. You've done a decent job in your research projects. And uh, that, was, that was the crossroads. Uh, jumped, you know, the, the recent changes in the space agency allowed for that. So uh, I looked inward at that point. You know, when I really started imagining that I was uh, going to be a neurosurgeon, and in, particularly in the fabric of where I was, you know, the quote, Dr. Roden was really one of the biggest inspirations in my professional life. The brain is the crossroads jewel of creation and evolution. Everything this man did in his career lived up to that, that, that edict. And uh, in those years, I was a cerebrovascular and skull base surgeon who happened to love spine surgery. And um, so that whole uh, push in brain surgery in that era was truly special. And uh, it led to that culture and that process of never stop pushing, never stop growing. Because at the end of the day, it was about all those people we were taking care of. 
Um, Dr. Roden was broadly considered the father of modern microneurosurgery from an anatomical standpoint. His lab was the most prolific and the most revered worldwide for the deep recesses in the brain and, and the arterial structure and how to navigate it and how to you know, take bone and not retract on the brain, leave minimal imprint. One of the edicts of surgery is sneak in, get the job done, sneak out, let the human not realize you were there. That's the best surgery. That's the ideal. That's what we all want. So with him as that backbone uh, for my uh, medical neurosurgical training, Jürgen Harms, I sought out. He was a German spine surgeon who had basically invented uh, modern spine reconstruction techniques. And he was the pillar of the early 90s. And so I knew there were things I had to learn from him. And then it became pretty obvious that we were doing brain surgery at one level because of the microsurgery and the detailed precision and the uh, exponential detail work. And then we had the reconstruction challenge and, and that prompted it. So with all of these things as the pillars, you know, enter AR. I, I've always been obsessed with making surgery better. It started with improving screw design so that it would make the skin incision smaller and then improve cage design so you could do a much more anatomically correct reconstruction strategy through a, a tiny less than one inch incision. And then from there it went to solutions and delivery systems and enabling technologies, uh, exascopes, which is a digital 8K microscope that floats that you can ultimately integrate. All of these tools were built to solve little problems of quantum levels of my surgical development within spine surgery. Well, when AR came, it, I finally found something that I thought could solve the biggest and simplest problem of all, how to make the OR better. With augmented reality, we found a way to penetrate the sterile field. In general, digital data has come from the top down through healthcare system to the privilege sterile field, the, the barrier. And with the augmented reality capability, there was a, a pathway to get the data into the surgical field and into the sterile field. And so we started that ideation. And uh, it took a while. You know, in 2020, we, we actually saw for the first time something resembling what we thought the surgical metaverse was. You know, the metaverse at that point to me uh, just reprimanded the ultimate organizational structure and foundational structure uh, for, you know, it's so um, busy in an OR. And, I, and, and there, there are hundreds of equipment pieces. Their orientation can be a variety of ways. There are hundreds of thousands of tools, consumables, pharmaceuticals, uh, the, the physiology of the patient, all those things that we manage are all basically done by a process that's 100 years old. The, and uh, it, it hasn't been digitized, it hasn't been replicated, and most importantly, it had no capacity for growth and perpetual improvement. So with AR and then some Suddenly, with the AI backbone and machine learning on the distal end with, with numbers, we had a strategy that could enable best practices that could help things grow. Um, so this, you know, was sort of the, the initial scheme. We. Uh, archetype this as drawings to ideate our product development. And we, we were starting to find features that we could use to measure and look at different aspects of surgical organization and strategy and sequencing and timing and timestamps of tool use and how many tools and, and how long. And so a, as we've gone along within the software design, which is the core value, we have found more and more and more features that we can use to extremely uh, achieve best organization and create opportunities for further expansion. Um, bottom line, tying it all together with the AI and the machine learning is about perpetual improvement. Again, the process, the reason uh, I started the journey in the first place. No two surgeries or surgeons or clinical situations are the same. Uh, bringing infinite data, virtual enhancement of the environment, improving surgical teams, uh, was, became the compulsion beyond my own role to improve my surgeries. I think in the heroes of the surgery workspace, 
that have been neglected are the team members. Everyone focuses on the big fancy surgeon, but the scrub nurse, the scrub tech, all of the people supporting the room, the circulating nurse, deserve immense credit for having to put up the kind of stress that people like me put on them to make everything perfect in an environment that doesn't help them be great at what they do, particularly if they're not familiar with my OR or my room or my equipment or my tendencies. Well, we've created a system that will perpetually grow within any given surgeon, any given procedure, and any given uh, surgical specialties opportunity for, to execute patient care. Um, AI to perpetually organize and optimize best surgical organization and processes coupled with ML to dynamically develop best practices perpetually. Gives me the opportunity to share my setup or my lean strategies with a colleague halfway around the world and vice versa or any of the surgeons I've trained. I've trained over 1,500 surgeons in advanced minimally invasive spine surgery and the biggest question I get back is, well, you know, I was so focused on the, the, the employee plant, the widget, I, I didn't pay attention to the room setup. I didn't pay attention to your organization. Your, that's the foundational part of surgery and execution and focus and performance is you don't want distraction. You don't want chaos. You know, too many people accept the chaos. And uh, so we really saw augmented reality on the back end of a software strategy to organize surgery as a really, really simple way to perpetually improve surgery across the board. At the end of the day, the goal is to improve human lives. You know, from a global perspective, I've thought about this question a lot. People have asked about the democratization of healthcare as it relates to what we're doing. And there are a lot of different ways to look at it as a problem. And, you know, I, I heard one of the talks this morning and I, I agreed with it that we're so focused on fancy tech and fancy solutions for certain things that, you know, simple solutions like better communication, education, and engagement works. I agree with that. On the other hand, it doesn't matter what sector of society you're in, the real health equity problem in surgery is access to care. And there tends to be easy access in the best enabled vicinities and really slow access. But eventually, somehow, some way, at least in the, in the uh, privileged nations, everybody finds their way to surgery. We really need a way to elevate the quality of the team performance and the surgeon performance in all of those facilities, regardless of what their zip code is. So with that being said, you know, improved access is, is one of the big keys. Obviously, better efficiency leads to more availability of assets and tools and instrumentation, lean performance, lean trays. You know, when you do a surgery and you're using an implant system and in some spinal systems, there will be 23 trays this big by this big metal stacked that have to be shipped in for that case at that hospital. And, and they don't have enough of those 23 tray systems to leave them at all of those hospitals. So just imagine the obscene logistics burden of sending that amount of material back and forth across the country and the world uh, for any given spine surgery that needs to be done. That happens every single day by every major company in North America and abroad. You know, um, so we see a lot of opportunity to share interconnection with uh, overseas surgeons to communicate. Uh, people have talked about education. Totally believe that the foundational operating system in the sterile field, the OR, will improve access to remote surgery, education and training and intraoperative consults and communication with industry experts and, and specialists who can help manage the equipment on the back table without cluttering the OR or distracting from the space or the surgery. Uh, at the end of the day, um, my, my uh, chairman, Al Roden, his most important line that we heard too much, and you probably have heard it too much already, there is no finish line. That really is our general theme, you know. Uh, at the end of the, 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 what is the surgical metaverse, the way I define it? I see it as the foundational virtual organizational network that coordinates and interconnects ORs, surgeons, teams, equipment, tools, consumables, implants, systems, and all of the data that defines the experiential journey of exceptional surgery. And how is exceptional dis, uh, defined? Exceptional surgery is defined by the outcome of the human, not by the x-rays, not by the post-operative details, not by the complication rate miraculously being better. Best surgery is about best recovery.
and becoming exactly the person that you were before you needed to have that surgery. And, and that's a more modern transcendence of surgical evaluation and goals. And that's my next level where I feel we need to take this. So with that being said, thank you so much. It's been an amazing weekend.